So uh, my name is Seb, Sebastian Lava from Montreal, Canada. I am an Office Dev MVP for now more than four years and a half, whatever that a half. Um, I've been doing SharePoint for a long, long time. I'm a product evangelist and partner manager for a company called Follow Internet, where we uh, manage a bunch of different partners here in the US and in Canada. And uh, I've been doing that uh, for now more than 12 years. So my background is, uh, so actually I was born in SharePoint and I like to say that. Uh, I've been in an internship, went out of college and someone asked me, do you know anything about .NET? I said, yes, I'm very, very proficient in .NET. So you know something about SharePoint? You, you want to get a job, so you say yeah. And then you just start in there and then the next day you know that you're working in SharePoint Design and InfoPath Design in 2006. Um, and then my background is really dev focused. So I've been from there, I, I moved to the real dev uh, side of things, working on, in, on SharePoint 2003, 2007, 2010, 2013, 2016, and now in the cloud. Um, five years ago, I did a big switch from backend dev, .NET, and everything to entirely uh, JavaScript and CSS and HTML. I bought a Mac at the time, was like, can I do any Visual Studio stuff in here? So I just switched entirely to the, to the modern stack, and since then, that's what I'm doing. Spend a lot of times. Um, I've been working with the SharePoint framework since is early, early, early days where nothing was actually working. Uh, but since, uh, I've been working a lot to understand the different concepts in the framework. So, um, and that framework also brought me into the React world and all the Webpack and everything. So that was a good way to start that modern uh, web dev stack. Uh, I've been working on like, what, what, maybe two years now that the SharePoint framework is out. Um, and still today, I'm having a bunch of fun with the, <laughs> with the framework, it's awesome. The SharePoint to framework today is, for me, a very, very good step. Like, I think it was something that was needed in the SharePoint world, especially in the dev world, where it was a nightmare for us to customize any SharePoint experiences through any of the other customization options we had, including add-ins and all that stuff. Um, I, I still think that it's not complete, uh, that we need more than that to be able to actually really, really, really offer a nice experience to anyone building amazing solutions. For now, it's pretty much only web parts and extensions, and that is, for me, not enough. Especially coming from a very, very deep .NET background. And there, it's, we need, I know working, the team is working hard on making things happening, but if we need to switch, there's not enough in there for me to actually switch and build all my, my solutions entirely on the SharePoint framework. So for now, that's how I feel about the framework. Um, it's good. First, it's good that it's public. Uh, it's also good that we see what gets removed from the, <laughs> from the roadmap. Quite interesting to see. Um, I think the roadmap for now is very, 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 sh like, it's not long term, it's not mid term, it's very, very sh short term. We don't see a lot of what is going to happen in a year or so. There's a bunch of different items in there that are cool that we know that are requested by all the devs and that are, that needs to happen. But I want to see more than that. I want to see like the complete story. I want to see where, what's, what you're aiming for today. And that will help us in shaping our own solutions to try to take advantage of at least the mindset that we'll need in a couple of months or in a couple of years to be able to build something today that's going to be still relevant in a couple of whatever versions of the SharePoint framework. I, I would say that the, the web parts um, just because it's the only part that actually really worked today. Um, though I really think that there's a lot of cool stuff happening on the extensions side. If we go like somewhere else and just what the feature of the framework is, I think the, the, the stack is what is absolutely amazing. And um, I've been talking to a lot of devs that are not SharePoint devs, because when you're a SharePoint dev, you're like cursed. Um, those devs are like, okay, so I guess you're still doing like .NET stuff in the web page form and blah, 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 stuff that are pretty boring now. Like, no, actually I'm using Webpack and I'm using all those different technologies. Like, oh, that's interesting. Actually, I will try it and I'll let you know. And some of my friends actually try it. It's like, okay, that's, that's decent. That's interesting. So that's probably what is the most appealing for me and appealing for the community as it's not only about SharePoint, it's about the stack and then you just use whatever you want in there. So that's, I think that's something that is pretty cool and that's gonna 
be a key for the SharePoint framework to survive through years as there's gonna be a huge community around that. Well, that is an easy one. Um, been an Angular dev for the last four years. So I like to be able to have, you know, that screen, no, no framework, re React and knock out, whatever. I want to have Angular there and be able to have natively Angular included in that uh, framework. The reason why is that I think there's a lot of people around the, the Angular community that would help. I don't think Angular would like resolve all the problems. I, I think it's just one use case that is added on top of the framework. But if I can get that, I will be extremely happy, extremely, extremely happy. First, I want to change the way the way the, the that open source community should work. So for now, I'd like to be able to change stuff in the in, in the SharePoint framework. I'd like to help the Microsoft team to understand how we actually dev and everything, and go in and do a pull request on the Yeoman generator or help them in understanding how I want to do stuff. I know the GitHub, there's all those issues. We can put that, but that is questions, answers, and then thanks for your feedback. And that's, or it's gonna be there in two weeks or in three weeks. I'd like to be able to fix and help Microsoft building that. I think the .NET team did an amazing job when they opened the code and actually they had plenty of pull requests and lots of new code from the community to be injected in the .NET uh, stack. Why not the same thing for the SharePoint framework? So that would be how, what I would change is to open up to the community. There's a bunch of excellent devs that will help them to build what is required. I'm thinking I can, in, in, in the past, when when SharePoint was still a thing of the, of the backend, it was like that tool, uh, CKS dev, that was actually built by community for real, like, for real business scenarios where dev needed that kind of stuff. If I can add the exact same thing with the SharePoint framework, that would be awesome. Let's, let's take the entire SharePoint dev community. Um, lots of them are still doing on-prem stuff with .NET and all of that. I think one of the biggest challenge is the transition from that old model, from .NET, from timer jobs, from event receivers, to something that is more modern and more cloud-enabled and more SharePoint framework type of thing. So um, that means changing your entire build process, changing your, your, the language you're using, changing to JavaScript, uh, go into the async mode and not to, to, to be uh, asking that, that, is, that is in sync. So that is something that is extremely uh, challenging for a dev. I think it's doable. I think there's a lot of like parallels that can be done between TypeScript and C-sharp or uh, MS build and uh, Webpack or Gulp or whatever, but that is a challenge that people, if, if you're like really, really, really into the, dot, the dot .NET dev, it's a hard step. So it's, it's kind of hard to, okay, I will leave my Visual Studio on the side and I will now use console and Visual Studio code and change my entire tool set. So that is something that for me is very, very challenging, especially for, for, for a big, large enterprise that built a skill set on top of their team and now they need to put that aside and start over. So that's one of the biggest challenges. So I'd say that where I want the framework to be in maybe 18 months is I want to have the complete survey or at least feature parity with what we have on premises today. Um, but not only feature parity, but also come with brand new ways of doing things, brand new uh, features, brand new capabilities that are not currently available in the SharePoint world. Um, very, very rapidly, so short term, um, I want to be able to easily deploy, easily customize anything I'm doing with the SharePoint framework. That means uh, they announced a tenant-wide deployment for SharePoint framework, but I want more than that. I want to be able to deploy my extensions. I want to be able to have those uh, modern hooks all over the place with web hooks when that exists and everything. And I'd like to see a lot more tools um, and modern like features, modern paradigms in the in the SharePoint framework to happen, uh, but still, I really we the, 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 like if I look a lot uh, longer than that, 18, 24, 36 months. I just want to be the de facto SharePoint customization story. I want them to completely ditch the old model and and assume that this is a new model and that this new model will rule the rest. So they will bring it back to on-prem as much as they can, and then just use that and work hard on making things happening. So I'd say that my one advice for all enterprise devs will be to 
start investing time in learning about those new technologies. Forget the SharePoint framework. I don't care about the SharePoint framework for now. Learn about the stack, learn about Webpack, learn about TypeScript, learn about JavaScript. Even if it's something that is out there for a long time, uh, still people are not experts in that field. So I start by learning the foundations. Then afterwards, learn like the basic SharePoint framework process from the Yo generator to the Gulp servant to be able to package that. I think to know the foundations will help you build amazing solutions. We don't care about how you write your web part or how you write your extensions, but if you know what are the customization available, uh, how you can customize a SharePoint solution and how you can build a web part using the foundation uh, technology, TypeScript and all of that, then I think you'll be in good position to be able to move forward um, and also start looking at cloud paradigms. So stop thinking about what's a web, like I want to build a timer job. No, think somewhere else. Go see Azure opportunities, go see Azure functions. You, you use what the cloud has to offer to actually implement great SharePoint framework solutions.